Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. So, as you mentioned, my presentation is mix evidence, scientific literature review and recommendation plus personal experience as an observer in prison. So, you know, based on evidence we have, it's about 56 to 90 percent of people who inject drug have experience or will have experience to go to prison by UNH report. And we think about heroin and opiate substitution, but nowadays we have different type of addiction, especially new psychoactive, you know, substance. We have challenge in prison with that. HIV prevalence is five times and HCV 15 times more in prison population than general population. Needle exchange and needle program in society in our region is very poor. It's one to four needle distribution per individual per year in MENA region. And then, as you know better than me, mortality rates and increasing HIV AIDS among key population in our region is one of the highest plus Eastern Europe. So two regions in the world based on the World Health Organization report where we have increased rate of uh, deaths and new infected cases. And then 57% of new infected adults in MENA region have history of injection, so drug injection. So this is the situation we have in the world and in the region. So income, you know, for prison, as you see, you know, the idea, the philosophy was treating behavior or mind of people by putting them in prison. So this is the philosophy they build prison and they said, okay, maybe they did wrong and we push people to go to prison. But what's happened when we talk about HIV AIDS? So in community, people and authorities will select people who have injecting behavior, <coughs> injecting drug behavior. And when they select them, they will concentrate them in the closing setting and it will be another issue when they share their you know, equipment to increase the rate in the closing setting. And then later on, when they release them, they will come to community and people around them will receive this infection again. So we are in the negative circle. And then, based on numbers of surveys, they continue their behavior even we push them several times to go to prison. So it's among, you know, people who inject drug. So then it was idea during the 80s, we don't have drugs, we don't have HIV in prison. There's numbers of, you know, research and survey. It shows, you know, one of them, it's between 0 to 28 percent in 75 low meat income country. HIV prevalence is average 10 percent. So then you can see in Soviet Union and then Eastern Europe and Latinos countries the high rate of HIV AIDS among prisoners. And among female prisoners we have a big issue because we concentrated people who use drugs because overall numbers of prisoner, uh, uh, female prisoners is low. But those female prisoners are in prison because of sex or drug. Because of that, the prevalence rate among pre female prisoners is higher than male prisoners. So what should we do? So this is recommendation, international recommendation, and the algorithm by my friend Rick Altis, they publish it in the book in Oxford online, you can find it. So five, you know, recommendation internationally. So in the entrance of prison, we should provide HIV tests. In prison, opioid uh, agonist trophy. And then, you know, access to condom, still injection, and universal access to ART. 
and overdose prevention. So I added that, but it's in the package. So these are recommendations we have to think about it when people wanted to go to prison, in entrance, in prison, and after release. So based on that, let's see what's going in prison. So poor access to health service. We know health service and health system in prison is very poor, and they don't have access prisoner in general package of health. The second one, authorities wanted to push them to go to prison, so the priority for them is punishment, then provide health service and develop friendship. And the other side, prison staff and prison healthcare providers overall are staff of Ministry of Justice or Ministry of Interior, which means they are friends of those people who punish those target people. So the outcome, why, why we wanted to provide OST in prison? So it's clear by science, you know, when we provide OSD, it's alternative to reduce overdose, deaths, to reduce needle shading, to reduce risky behavior. So it's evidence-based, you know, approach. Do we have this service? Only 54 countries in the world, they provide OSD in prison, but it's not in all prison, it's in selected prison, 54 countries are providing OST. And then, in many settings, in many settings, when prisoners are in, in unit A, they must move to unit B to receive these services, which means they will be targeted for prison staff to do more action on them. So, for needle exchange, Overall, only 10 countries provide needle in prisons. And then at least I know one of them, which is Tajikistan, is only for five people. It means nothing. So numbers of people who receive needle, numbers of country is very low. So overdose prevention. So it's recommended by WHO because we have sometimes conservative you know, countries and they love to follow word by word of WHO recommendation. It is recommended by WHO, but, but only six countries in the world, they have a strong program for overdose, you know, naloxone in prison. And then usually inside of prison, medical staff provide that. So it means how prisoner can come and say, I am injecting in prison, and then report to the medical staff to receive these services. So which means this fancy program only in six countries is not available in other countries. So I wanted to come out from prison and go to the Society, what's happened and what's going in MENA region. You can see in this slide. So, for first one, you know, if you look at the, the last one, Middle Exchange Program 000 in our region. So, OSD in prison, one, two, three, four, five countries, limited access. Then, Naloxon, nothing. So, safe. Injection room in society, nothing. So there is some action outside of the prison in society in our region. So it means we have challenge in society as well, and less rare action in prison in men region. Prevalence rate increasing. So we have, you know, HIV, HCV in prison in society increased, but service is rare. So this is one of the, you know, I wanted to go to numbers. So 2016, this is estimation number, 625,000 prisoners we have. One third of them is related to drug. And then mentality of authorities and judiciary system is more punishment than availability of service and alternative service. And then you can see, you know, the, the rate of HIV AIDS in prisons, 
So in those countries, and drug, using drug accepted by local government and published and reported to the worldwide you know, organizations. So action. So OSD, I showed you know, four or five countries. In Iran, they have about 50,000 people on OSD, 6,000 in Israel and in Palestine. And for Morocco and Lebanon, is very low and is a special setting. Condom is rare and then no needle exchange program. So, you know, for after release, okay, let's see we have program or we don't have program in prison. So, if there is no program, people, they cannot find drugs, they will go to step-by-step self-rehabilitation. But when they come out, they will go to the same community with same environment and same challenge. So after release is very important. And the challenge we have can be individual, interpersonal, and social and environmental. We, we don't have action about that and we don't have idea about that in the region. So these are recommendations how we can categorize before prison, in prison, and after prison. So this is, you know, you can find it in the website lecture. Now I wanted to use the last two minutes I have for my personal. You know, when police will arrest people, if that person using drug, heroin, so we have, you know, half time for that, half lifetime. So it's six to eight, 10 hours. Where are those people? They are in the police station for 72 hours. Do they have access to service zero? Where is methadone? In those countries, I showed you, 50,000 OST in Iran, it's in the prison. When they will be in the prison? After three to six months. So, first 72 hours in police station, then in jail high risk rate of injection are in those two settings. We don't have any service. Then later on, they will go to the prison. So do we have categorization by prisoners? Yes, we will put new people to go to drug dealers, to go to people who don't have any crime, or people who have low crime. They will share their experience, and that will be a challenging environment for people who maybe quit or who maybe didn't have any idea about drug. So that will be a personal lesson learned from each other, and that is challenging environment when we see highest rate of prisoner they use they share the needle is in that time. So now, if we wanted to provide service. Instead of putting that in the fancy prison, and those prisoners will show up after one, two years, we should put them in the police station and in the jail in the beginning of the issue, not in the last stage. And then when they release from prison, what we wanted to do, we wanted to say goodbye, You've, we finished our intervention to change your mind to be good people without any support. So then we do relapse and relapse and we have, you know, that challenge after release. Who should do that? So this is numbers of studies in the world. If prison staff wanted to continue that job, it's not effective. We need community-based organization to work with prison staff. I agree with my friend from Egypt. Yes, government is there. Government is support. But government is enemy people. Why? Because they arrested those people and they punished those people to be in the prison. So how we can say, government punished me six years to be in prison because of using drugs, and then say, this is a friend of mine, and he wanted to provide service for me, and it's acceptable. This is AAA cube. Service should be acceptable by clients, not by providers. So we have this challenge. Government is involved, yes, but government punished those drug users to be in prison, those sex workers to be in prison. 
then this is not friendly relation. We need to involve community-based organization to come to work on that and develop collaboration with prison organization and government to provide these services. So finally, I wanted to thank to American University of Beirut, International Aid Society, Redka and Nassim for the fantastic job. Thank you very much.